Ливии. Dive safety. It's no accident. Understanding the triggers of dive fatalities by Dan Orr. Divers Alert Network takes great pride in being your dive safety association. And for more than 30 years, we've been conducting research to help make diving safer. Recently, Dan researchers reviewed our accumulated fatality data and conducted a root cause analysis of nearly a thousand recreational diving fatalities to determine what circumstances and events led to diver deaths. In this analysis, Dan researchers identified four different phases in the cascade of events leading to a fatality. The trigger, the disabling agent, the disabling injury, and the cause of death. As the earliest identifiable root causes that transform dives into emergencies, the triggers merit special attention. Identifying these triggers is essential so that divers can avoid or manage them during dives. In the fatality analysis, the triggers were identified as follows. First, running out of breathing gas. The trigger in 41% of cases. Entrapment, 21%. Equipment problems, 15%. Rough water, 10%. Trauma, 6%. Buoyancy, 4%. And inappropriate gas, 3%. We'll review each of these in turn. First, running out of breathing gas. The most significant trigger was running out of breathing gas. Now to put this in context, approximately 400 divers out of the thousand cases studied might have been alive today if they had managed their gas supply correctly. Because of the equipment standard in diving today, running out of breathing gas underwater especially before any other problems occur, should simply never happen. So be air aware. Always begin dives with a full cylinder of breathing gas and end dives, that is standing on the boat, dock or shore, with gas remaining. Before starting a dive, you and your fellow divers should decide how you will communicate information about your remaining gas supplies during the dive. Establish a point at which you will be making your way to the exit. That may be when the first diver reaches half of their breathing gas supply, but it may be sooner than that. Many cave divers use the rule of thirds, which has divers using the first third of their gas supply for the dive, the second third to exit from the cave or the ascent, and the final third set aside for contingencies. This may seem very conservative for open water diving, but the idea of leaving a significant reserve for emergencies or other unexpected circumstances is absolutely relevant. Anything short of total management of your breathing gas puts you, your buddy and every other diver in the vicinity at risk. Second, entrapment. The next most common trigger in diving fatalities is entrapment. Approximately 200 divers in the Dan fatality records, or about 21%, found themselves trapped in an overhead environment and unable to get back to open water. An overhead environment is any in which the diver does not have direct vertical access to the surface, such as a cave, cavern, wreck or under ice. Every training organization warns divers about the dangers of entering such environments without appropriate training, experience, planning and equipment. The way to mitigate the hazard of this trigger is simple. Don't enter overhead environments without being qualified and prepared to do so. When in doubt, stay out. Equipment problems. The third most common trigger identified in the fatality analysis was equipment problems. This trigger caused 15% or about 150 of the fatalities studied. Notably, 
this does not mean the equipment failed or its design was flawed. Rather, the problems were mostly the result of user error. These errors included improper use, failure to ensure correct configuration, lack of maintenance, and insufficient familiarity with the equipment. Dr. George Harper, an experienced investigator of diving fatalities in Ontario, states, we are not able to document a single case in which equipment malfunction directly caused a diver's death or injury. It has been the diver's response to the problem that results in the pathology. It is important to remember that dive equipment is life support equipment. Learn all about its features and functions. Practice with it and maintain it. Take care of your gear so it can take care of you. Knowing how divers get into serious trouble only advances the discussion so far. For divers to be safer, we must apply the lessons that can be taken from these tragic events. How can we, as divers, reduce the likelihood that these triggers will cause problems for us? Education. Now that we've looked at the most common triggers and know how divers get into serious trouble, we are only advanced this far. For diving to be safer, we must apply the lessons that can be taken from these tragic events. So how can we as divers reduce the likelihood that these triggers will cause problems for us? We'll consider the following. Education. Take full advantage of every opportunity to learn. Read dive magazines, spend time with experienced divers, attend dive club meetings, and check out dive lectures or seminars online. More knowledgeable divers are safer divers. Get trained in the type of diving you want to do, but don't stop learning when you leave the classroom. Treat every dive as an educational experience. Use any unexpected incidents that occur as diving opportunities to brainstorm and discuss response options, contingencies and prevention strategies with your buddies. Next, practice. Dive skills and emergency management skills require constant practice and reinforcement. So refresh your skills often, especially when you haven't been diving in a while. Take time to familiarize yourself with new equipment in a controlled environment before using it in open water. Although practice may not make you perfect, it will help you to make the right decisions and manage problems appropriately rather than trying to escape to the surface. Experience. The value of experience cannot be overstated. Divers with limited experience, including those returning to the sport after a long absence, are at the greatest risk. According to the Dan Fatality data, 88% of the divers died on the first dive of the dive series. So consider the number of dives in your logbook or the date on your certification card. Consider that the number of dives in your logbook or the date on your certification card do not automatically qualify you for greater challenges. To truly be prepared for more advanced diving, slowly and methodically increase the complexity of task loading of your dives. Expand your horizons gradually, making sure you don't outpace your training and your level of comfort. Certification is not the same thing as proficiency. Don't dive your qualification, dive your experience. Next, health. Approximately a quarter of the fatalities involved cardiac problems. Amazingly, in 60% of cases with cardiac involvement, the divers had symptoms such as shortness of breath, chest pain or fatigue, but proceeded to dive anyway. Most divers are aware of the importance of good general health and fitness for diving, but comfort and well-being at the time of the dive are also important. If you are not feeling up to a dive, don't dive. Wait and see how you feel later. The majority of these cardiac cases were associated with pre-existing conditions or age greater than 40. 
it's a good idea for everyone older than 35, whether or not they dive, to have an annual medical examination. An examination is also recommended following any change in an individual's health status. Divers might benefit from having this examination formed by a doctor trained in diving medicine. If you don't know a physician in your area who is familiar with diving medicine, you can call the DAN hotline at 0800 020 in South Africa or plus 27 828 10 60 10 when calling from abroad.